Once the diagnosis of a mole rotation is established, the first step in the correction of the malocclusion is to determine the desirable force system. For example, if the right maxillary first molar is uh, rotated mesial in, a mesial out mo moment is necessary to correct the rotation of the molar. The equilibrium diagram shows that mesial and distal forces are produced on the right and left sides of the dental arch. The molar that rotates will also be uh, tipped forward and the molar on the opposite side of the arch will be tipped back. When a continuous arch wire is used, uh, the active correction of the mower rotation using toe in bend, the mower will move buccally and the premowers will move lingually, creating abnormal buccal overjet in the premower and the mower areas. The abnormal overjet uh, will need further correction and uh, this can be a lengthy process using uh, continuous arch wires of uh, increasing cross sections. The correction of a unilateral mower rotation can be uh, efficiently achieved by using uh, transpalatal arch producing a, a statically determined force system. Clinically, after the alignment of the teeth using light flexible arch wires, a rigid segment of wire 17 by 25 inch stainless steel is placed uh, from the premolar area on the right side of the dental arch, extending to the left molar. A transpalatal arch of 0 0.032 inch by 0 0.032 inch titanium molybdenum alloy or 0 0.030 inch stainless steel is then placed with the unilateral first order activation. The side effects previously discussed are not expressed clinically because of the large number of teeth included in the anchorage unit. As the mole rotation is uh, corrected, the occlusion on that side of the arch will improve and become more class 1. In the sagittal plane, the axial inclination of the left mower will be um, maintained because of the rigid segment of wire placed as anchorage. On the right side, the mower will experience a mesial force, but the amount of forward tipping of the tooth clinically visible will be m minimized by the presence of adjacent teeth. Treatment of the class 2 subdivision malocclusion. A number of different treatment modalities are available to the clinician to correct the asymmetric buccal occlusion resulting from an abnormal axial inclination of the mower on one side of the arch. For example, unilateral class 2 elastics can be used in association with a continuous arch wire, but this approach may cause a number of undesirable side effects. These side effects will depend on the magnitude and point of uh, application of the force, as well as the duration of elastic wear. Significant counting of the maxillary anterior occlusal plane resulting from the vertical component of the class 2 elastic is observed, extruding the side of the arch where the elastic is worn. The occlusal plane on the side of the correction will also steepen uh, as a, a result of the vertical forces applied to the anterior portion of the maxillary and posterior portion of the mandibular arches. This will make the stability of the treatment questionable, especially if adequate growth does not occur. Tilting of the arches can develop along with flaring of the mandibular incisors. The development of an asymmetric overjet is usually the initial sign of the occurrence of these side effects. Unilateral class 2 correction has also been achieved with the use of uh, open coil spring or sliding jigs to tip back the mower unilaterally to correct its mesial distal axial inclination. This unilateral molar distalization in the maxillary arch is more predictable before the eruption of the second mower. The coil spring delivers a distal force to the crown of the mower and a tip back moment and a mesial force to the premowers and canine tipping these teeth forward. Nance buttons have sometimes been recommended to enhance anchorage in the maxillary arch 
but with varying degrees of success. Unilateral class 2 elastics can be used in this situation to uh, counteract the mesial force delivered by the coil spring. Undesirable side effects from the extrusive component of the class 2 elastics may be observed. Uh, skewing of the dental arches as well as flaring of the lower incisors uh, are common side effects experienced with the use of these mechanics. Sliding jigs have also been advocated to correct the medial distal axial inclination of the molar. These jigs uh, slide uh, on uh, continuous arch wires and although the class 2 elastic is not directly attached to the arch wire, uh, most of the undesirable side effects uh, previously described can be observed with this appliance system. Unilateral tip back bands incorporated in a 2x4 appliance or continuous arch wires have also been advocated for the unilateral correction of a tip molar. The force system includes a unilateral tip back moment at the mower on the side of the tip back bend, but also a unilateral intrusive force on the anterior portion of the arch on the same side. This results in a cant of uh, the anterior occlusal plane that is difficult to correct. The Jasper Jumper appliance, uh, when activated unilaterally, has also been advocated for the correction of unilateral class 2 occlusion. This appliance is usually accompanied by continuous uh, uh, round uh, wire in the maxillary arch and a heavy rectangular arch wire in the mandibular arch. The maxillary mower will not only tip back, but uh, will also have uh, applied to it an intrusive force. As a result of the buckle point of application of the intrusive force, the maxillary mower may also tip buckly, thus increasing the buckle over jet. You can see an occlusal view of both the maxillary and mandibular dental arches shows the mesial movement of the mandibular arch on the side of the jasper jumper and the skewing of the arch. The CR is the center of resistance.